I just wondered whether you had a sense that this was kind of revolutionary, what you were doing? Well, I think those of us involved in the early 70s did have a feeling that we were on a mission. Um, there'd been a lot of anger at the fact that Australian stories couldn't be told on Australian stages. There were no Australian films, very few novels, a tiny bit of television. Uh, but it was almost as if Australian storytellers were locked out of their own industry. Um, actors went abroad to train in London, study all uh, received English and all the regional accents. Because if they came back to Australian theatre companies, which were mainly run by Englishmen, they'd be doing English plays with English regional accents, occasionally an American play, never an Australian one, since Summer of the 17th Dole and the one day of the year, that was in the 50s, the one day a year in the 60s, nothing. So there was a lot of pent up anger. Why are, aren't we allowed to tell our own stories? Why aren't our actors allowed to have their own accents? And the answer was, as A.A. Phillips said, a massive cultural cringe that um, we were an ex-convict colony. Um, we were basically dense and stupid. Um, we lived lives that were extraordinarily dull and therefore there was nothing to write about. Um, we could perhaps become good soldiers and serve the empire or and we could certainly become good sportsmen if we we're going to beat those poms we could at least do it on the cricket field but we must never dare to aspire to be creative because that's beyond us and that was the attitude of our cultural elites john sumner was a force for great good. He started a very good repertory company, but in his list of objectives for the Melbourne Theatre Company, uh, number one was, and this is my translation, it didn't say it like this, but it was virtually to uplift and educate the beer-swilling slobs uh, to the finer points of European, particularly English, culture. Uh, that, it wasn't expressed that way, but that was the, that was the gist of it. Number 10 was to encourage local playwriting in a list of 10. Um, there was no sense that theatre was about telling our own stories or discovering the unique, uniqueness of our way of life or the way we use language, nothing. And so we felt we were on a mission. That anger fueled us uh, to a point of fury sometimes that uh, we had a right to our own stories and the country was not even a country in, in, in some senses until it could view its own stories. Um, America has the luxury of seeing its own lifestyles 98% of the time on its screens. I think it's a luxury which is, goes too far because they, they, began, they obviously think they're the centre of the universe. In those days we had zilch. Yeah, I'm just interested because uh, we've interviewed Alan Hopgood and Tony Morford in this series of interviews and they're a little older than you. And, uh, and so I suppose what I'm interested in is that, that generational moment. Um, Alan Hopgood, for example, had plays on Melbourne Theatre Company and The Big Men Fly. Oh, right, you did. And, you did. and Tony Morford had a play on at Jane Street before the removal has turned up. Um, uh, and yet they really have become screenwriters and television writers, although Alan's gone back to writing for the theatre. Um, but they weren't part of a movement. You know, they were just a little too early for yeah. that stage yeah. moment, it seems. Yep. Um, so it's a generational... It's just one of those... I suppose it's just a sociological shift, is it? Um, well, I think... I, I think it's to do with the fact that Betty Burstall came back from New York uh, fired up by Off Off Broadway Theatre, started her own and consciously looked for writers. Um, and around the corner of the APG started up as an alternative uh, theatre group. In Sydney, uh, John Clark started the Jane Street season looking for new Australian writing. Unless you actually actively look for new Australian writing and unless it, unless it starts 
in a venue other than the mainstream venue, then it won't arouse any excitement. Uh, probably uh, those early plays of Alan and that were just seen as, as token Australian works in establishment theatre uh, because occasionally you had to do something Australian. But when the out of town stuff happened and people started going to that, there was a sense of excitement, something new is happening. These are not just token plays, um, these are saying something new about this culture in a new type of way. And I suppose that brings me to that question about the, the fact that your plays, uh, they tend to be domestic, overall, uh, interested in uh, personal relations on a family level or among friends, uh, and they're, they're contemporary uh, about what's happening right now in Australia. Um, and while I notice that your films tend to be more historical or political in a sort of more public sense, is that, that a, a sort of...? Well, yeah, you... When I'm writing as a stage writer, I write what I, I like to write. Um, as I said, uh, the stage, in a sense, is a study of language and power uh, and status, uh, the way people use language for those ends. Um, uh, and the film I've been hired to do a job by someone who already has a story in their head. Um, and that's been good. I mean, some of the stories I've been given have been terrific. I mean, I really uh, enjoyed uh, Gallipoli, The Year of Living Dangerously. Uh, I got the script Farlap about a great race horse, um, and I knew nothing about horse, <laughs> horse racing. They had to get up at four in the morning and go and watch them train and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I've enjoyed that other avenue and certainly uh, being asked to write A Dangerous Life, which I think was a six or eight hour mini-series about the fall of the Marcos government, that was quite exotic. I mean, that was uh, really dealing with contemporary history in quite an exciting way. Um, doing a remake of uh, On the Beach, the famous Neville Shoot novel, was a terrific privilege too and something I you, you wouldn't do as a stage writer. It's because producers come up with these ideas and look for a writer. 